Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> You know, Mr. Dillon, a man can get a whole lot out of books if he just puts his mind to it. Yeah, I guess he can at that, Chester. Did you know they got books on everything? Man takes the time to read them. There's books on politics, history, geography, hog racing. <laughs> Which one are you working on now? Well, this here book ain't exactly one of them top ones, but it's still mighty valuable, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what's it called? Advanced Theories in the Art of Draw Poker. Well, you know, there you could stand some improving, Chester, if that game last night was any sample. <laughs> I'll get it back. That's why Doc loaned me this book of his. Doc loaned you? <laughs> Chester, Doc lost more in that game than you did. Well, yes, but the cards just wasn't with him. But he's got the theories down cold. Why, this book tells you every play there is, Mr. Dillon. They... Oh, hello, Tessie. Uh, well, come in. He's come back, Marshal. Oh? Who's come back? Stead. Stead Rudger. I just saw him ride in. I'm afraid, Marshal. Uh, he's been away a long time, Tassie. I know, but he won't have changed any. You know the kind he is. Uh, six years, a man can calm down an awful lot. Not Stead. A lot of things have changed since he left. Yeah, I guess that's true enough. When he finds out about me and Tom, there's going to be trouble. Marshal, can't you arrest him? Arrest him? On what charge? He hasn't done anything. But he will, Marshal. Believe me, he will. You've you got to keep him and Tom apart. Where's Tom now? Over at the Long Branch. Marshal, what are you going to do? Look, Tessie, I don't go looking for trouble. Now, Stead can't expect to find everything the same way as he left But he it. will, Marshal. I know. Uh, hello, Stead. Evening, Marshal. Tassie. Well, hello, Tassie. How are you, Stead? Talk about luck. Come here to ask the marshal where to find you, and right here you are. And prettier than no, ever. No, Stead. No. Now, what kind of talk is that for a man to hear from his intended? Marshal, hmm? please. Stead, wait a minute. You've been away quite a while, haven't you? Long enough. Too long, maybe, Stead. Tassie's married now. Married? That's right. It's been almost three years, in it, Tassie? Yeah. Who'd you marry? Tom. My brother, Tom? That's right, Stead. That sneaking, rotten snake. You've got room to call names riding out of town free. Is there never a word That's from no you? no good double-crossing brother of mine. Sure, he's so no good he's worked himself half to death trying to save the ranch after your pa died. Well, Paul's dead, huh? Two years ago. So Tom got the ranch along with my girl. 
Well, Tom made a clean sweep for herself. Tassie, you better run along now. You leave this to me, will you? All right, Marshal. Goodbye, Stead. Tassie, as far as I'm concerned, you're still my girl. I said goodbye, Stead. She's still my girl. Stead, I'm going to give you some advice. You forget about her. You just ride on. I may just do that, Marshal. But not till after I talk to Brother Tom. All right, let's get it over with. You'll find him at the Long Branch. Thanks. And you'll find me right beside you while you talk. No call for that. I just aim to tell him something. No? Tell him what? Tell him I'm going to kill him. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Today, all over the country, more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. And it's all because only L&M gives you full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier. Tastes richer. Smokes cleaner. So free up. Freshen up your taste. Live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Some things don't change, Marshal. Yeah, such as? This here old long branch. Just a little noisier is all. Uh-huh. Well, your brother's down there at the end of the bar. So I noticed. Well, now. Dad Rudger. Hello, Miss Kitty. You still look the same. You haven't changed much yourself, Dad. Come on, Marshal, let's go. See you later, Miss Kitty. Yeah, sure. Look, Stead, I hope you've got it straight. You go for your gun and you know what'll happen. Just a little family reunion, Marshal. Don't you worry about a thing. Good evening, Marshal. Well, haven't seen you for quite a spell, Stead. Heard you was in town. Tell me, how are you, Tom? Stead, it's good to see you. What you holding your hand out for? Waiting to rot? Well, I just thought we'd shake for old time's sake. It's for old time's sake I'm going to kill you. Now, wait, Stead, if that's a joke or something. You kind. ran into Tassie in my office, Tom. I don't think it is a joke. But, well, Stead, you got things all wrong. I, I can explain about things if you just let Same me. Same way you explained to Tassie, maybe? Look, I didn't mean to do it, Stead. It, it just happened. You was gone so long. Well, I just fell in love with her, that's all. You're claiming that makes it all right? Well, I thought you'd forget her, Stead, before you'd been gone a month. That's how it was with her. In six months, she was all over. I'll just bet she was with you helping her. I'm telling you, she'd forgot about all her. All right, fine. Then she forgets easy, Tom. So in six months, she'll forget about you. Marshal, are you going to stand for this? I can't run him in for talking, Tom. We're going to settle this ourselves, Tom. Just you and me. You're a gunman, Stead, for six years now. 
I heard about you. I ain't got a chance against you. Yeah. You should have thought of that before. Wait a minute. Tom, are you in any position to pay him off in cash for his share of the ranch? Well, I reckon I could borrow it from the bank, but he ain't got no share, Marshal. Pa left the whole thing to me. The no. whole thing to you. But tomorrow night you won't be worrying about the ranch or about Tassie. What do you mean? Just listen to me, Tom. Early tomorrow morning I'll be sitting the front porch of the Dodge House. Just waiting for you. And unless you want it to happen right in front of Tassie, you better ride in. If you ain't showed there by sundown, I'll ride out after you. Stay Good night, I... Marshal. What am I going to do? Looks like it's already been done, Tom. The day you married Tassie. She's the one that counts. She's the only one. Stead yes, doesn't see it that way. Well, he thinks I wronged him, but he won't listen. He never would. But I ain't going to let it hurt her, no matter what it takes. <laughs> yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an l and Why are more people changing to L&M than to any other cigarette? Because only L&M lets you enjoy full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So free up, freshen up your taste, get full, exciting flavor. Live modern, smoke L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Tell you what, Doc, I'll stay and I'll raise you fifty cents. <laughs> yeah, fifty. Oh, you will. Yes, well, I'll just go right along with you on that raise, Matt. <laughs> yeah, well, I was hoping you would, Doc. Sure, you were. Uh, how many cards you want? Uh, uh, let me see now. <laughs> Give me three. Th three? Oh, raise me fifty cents on nothing but a pair. <laughs> Oh, my. And I'm taking one. You ought to read that book I loaned to Chester. No. <laughs> Might keep you from pulling such darn fool moves as that. Well, I'll try to get around to it before the winter's over, Doc. Mm -hmm. ah. All right, Doc. Uh, here's another dollar at you. Huh? A dollar? Oh, Matt, are you crazy? One way of finding out, Doc. <laughs> I drew three cards, then go right in for a dollar. <laughs> yes, you're aiming to bluff. But you're talking to the fellow who invented bluffing. Is that so? Well, Doc, if you'll just see All right, me. all right. I'm staying right with you. <laughs> and I'm upping you 50 cents. Oh, yes, if a man wants to throw his money around like a rum-drunk Comanche, I'm always glad to oblige. <laughs> oh, come on in, Chester. Uh, Chester. How's Stead making up? Well, he's still sitting there on the porch of the Dodge House, yeah. but he's getting kindly fidgety, Mr. Dillon. He is, huh? <clears throat> I reckon he ain't going to wait much longer. It can't be more than a half hour till sundown. Yeah. Well, I guess we better ride out ourselves, Justin. No, 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 you don't, Matt. No, no. Not just when I got you over a barrel. Doc, I got some business to it. Too. It'll keep until we finish this hand. It's your bet, Matt. <laughs> oh, you watch this, Chester. It's right out of the book. All right, you raise 50 cents, Doc, and I'll call you. Oh, oh, John, you. I was hoping you'd raise it some more. You're greedy, Doc. Okay, lay him down. It is a pleasure. 
<laughs> yes, I drew to a flush, and I made it. All blue. Oh, my, that pot looks like it's worth about $5. Uh, Doc, uh, wait just a minute. You know that pair I held? Well, they were aces, and I drew three cards. A pair of deuces, and another ace. Well, I declare. A fool, Howells? Oh, but the book says the odds against you... I never know. read the book, Doc. Let me see, that comes to $5 and a quarter. Thank you, Doc. Guess we better head out, Chester. Uh, uh, all right, Mr. Yeah, but, but, Matt, it's against all theory. Well, yeah, you're probably right, Doc. It was a hunch, that's all. Uh, uh, Doc? Doc, I ain't got much time for reading anymore. I'll get that book back to you first thing in the morning. Uh, keep it, Chester. Keep it! <laughs> Sure, pretty soon I ain't gonna be nothing but a doggone human icicle. He'll show up, Chester. Maybe he won't. He's just too doggone cold for him to even think about killing. It's not cold when you're carrying the hate in you that Stead is, Chester. It's a downright shame. Things being all twisted up this way, it just ain't justice, that's all. No, but it's a fact. Uh, it's a shame. It's Quiet, a... Chester. Hmm? It must be him, all right. Yeah. He sure don't care who hears him. Ali told Tom what he was going to do. Tom? Hold it, Stead. What? It's Marshal Dillon. You're covered. You walk up here slow. is the marshal, and still riding herd. Yeah. Tom's not here. The light in the house. Tassie's there. Well, she don't need no protection. Maybe she does, in a way. I'll ask you something, Ted. How do you feel about Tassie? You know how I feel. Maybe. But do you love her enough to put her ahead of yourself? It ain't a matter of that, the way I look at it. I'm afraid it is, Stead. Marshal, you know you're taking quite a bit onto yourself, ain't you? I'm just trying to stop a killing, Stead. I know you could get him to draw on you and claim self-defense, and you'd probably go free. But it won't get you what you want, Stead. It will get me what I want. And she'll forget him in six months. She'll never forget him. And neither will you. Oh, Tassie! Hey, wait a minute. What you doing? I could have told you this, but I figured it was better to get you out here and show you. Is that you, Marshal? Uh, yeah. Uh, could you come out a minute, Tassie? Stead's here. All right. Look, Stead, if you love her, you think it over before you go on trying to kill your brother. No, Marshal. Tassie? Uh... Stead may be riding on tonight, and I figured that uh, he ought to have a look at his nephew first. What? Uh, can you hold a match here, Chester? Uh, yes, sir. A look at... Well, now, careful. Shh. Don't wake him up. Nephew? Tess, you, you, you mean you and Tom... He's six months old now. I suppose you'd hurt. Here, let me look. Well, what's his name? Stedman Rutger. Stead. It was Tom's idea. He wanted to name him for you. It's aw awful cold for him out here. Oh, yeah. Well, get him back in the house, Tassie. Oh, listen, it's... Well, uh, like Marshall said, I'm riding on tonight. I, I just wanted to see him and, and say goodbye and and good luck, Tassie. If, if ever you need for anything, why... Well, you can reach me somehow. Thank you, Stead. Good luck to you. Night, Marshal. Uh, Tassie, by the way, Tom will be out later. He, uh, accidentally got locked up in jail today. 
in jail. Why, he'll explain when he gets here. Good night, Tassie. Good night, Marshal. All right, you win, Marshal. It's like poker, Stead. You size up your man, then you play your hunches. I kind of had a hunch that you really did care for her. Yeah. Well, I ain't getting no younger around here. Oh. See you again sometime. Yeah, Stead. Listen, Maybe. Marshal. You keep an eye on her, will you? Her and the kid both. Sure I will, Stead. Good luck. Thank you, Marshal. <laughs> Our star, William Conrad. You may not have exactly the kind of design for living you dream about, but you can keep up and improve your own home or apartment so that it's an asset to you and your community. Slum conditions don't remain only in a neglected house. They spread from building to building, from block to block. A slum area starts in one house. You can prevent slums by keeping your own home spotless. You can also help prevent slums in your block and your community by taking a giant step called action. The American Council to Improve Our Neighborhoods invites you to join them in prevention of fast-spreading slums. You can join with your neighbors in this program of housing improvement. Write for the free booklet that means better living for all Americans with advice and guidance about prevention of slums. The address is Action, Box 20, Radio City Station, New York. That's Action, Box 20, Radio City Station, New York. This has been a public service message of CBS Radio. And now, William Conrad. On the frontier, everybody wore some sort of a gun, unless they were a preacher, a woman, or a coward. Yet next week, a man who never wore a gun succeeds in killing off his enemies. And that was the West. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The script was specially written for Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston. The music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Ray Kemper and Tom Hanley. Featured in the cast were Lillian Bayef, Lawrence Dobkin, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story of the Western Frontier, when Matt Dillon, Chester Proudfoot, Doc, and Kitty, together with all the other hard-living citizens of Dodge, will be with you once more. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.